Hello and welcome to another episode of Seeing Live. I'm Coleon Noir, also known online as Sexy Chocolate Pro Gun YouTuber. Speaking of YouTube, I recently posted a video about the bolt action rifle ad custom made by Modern Outfitters. Check it out. Bolt action when the semi automatic rifle does it so much better. That was until I bought a bolt action and then I started to understand what all the fuss was about. And now, I'm buying guns like my MR1 bolt action rifle from Modern Outfitters. This rifle is fitted with Modern Outfitters custom titanium three lug action with a 60 degree bolt throw. And yes, it really is gold. And yes, the hexagonal fluting is more about sex appeal than any other perceived functional properties. However, the barrel's a different story. It's an M24 Bartlett barrel, which also has hexagonal fluting. But it's not just about the sex appeal here. The fluting makes the barrel one pound lighter, while making it look sexy as all hell. I can't forget the trigger either, which is a jewel trigger that has a two pound trigger pull, which continues to impress me every time I shoot it. I'm pretty certain a point of contention on this rifle will be the Magpul Hunter stock, which I'm sure some people will feel is too cheap for a bolt gun of this magnitude. Then again, this build was meant to be a balancing act of weight, quality, and functionality. The Magpul stock is a quality, well-functioning stock that I think looks really good, even withstanding the lack of any high-speed, low-drag features that are common on today's Transformer-style super chassis. Joining me to talk about the process that goes into custom building a bolt gun of sorts, like mine, uh, joining me is Andrew Hauser from Modern Outfitters. What's going on, Andrew? What's happening? Nothing much, nothing much. So, uh, you know, definitely got the, got, got the video together for my, for my baby. Um, that's not the first appearance it's made on this show. Uh, probably won't be the last. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like really quickly, let's kind of go into, you know, the process that goes into building a gun like that. And then let's talk about some of the, some of the new, the, the new uh, how do you say, reveal, so to speak, uh, that you guys have for us. Okay. Uh, so that build, just like any build that we do, uh, it all comes down to personal preference. And it's funny for, for me to sit there and, and read some of your posts and <laughs> everybody has an opinion, right, on, on what chassis is better or trigger or barrel. And uh, the beauty about a build is none of their opinions matter. Yep. Uh, it, whoever's building it, whether it's themselves or getting somebody else to build it, your happiness, your satisfaction, your color choices, your, your options, um, they're yours. And, and that's what makes them great. And, and that's why I, I think the folks that enjoyed building themselves, that's why they keep doing it. And those that truly get a custom build versus just buying, you know, the same old thing off the shelf, it, it's yours. It's unique to you, and that's what makes it special. Yeah, I, I can't talk about how special the gun feels enough, at least for me, simply because, you know, you know the level of input that I typically wouldn't have by buying a gun off the shelf uh, versus saying, okay, no. Nah, that gold i want to make that a little blingy blingy make it that color just because you know being able to do that yeah. um is, is something that is invaluable in many ways and, and you're right uh, I, it's interesting seeing some of the comments and people talking about well, why'd you do this why'd you do that? to be honest with you nobody should be surprised about anything they've seen on their gun no one no one at all um I guess you could make the argument for the hunter stock, but I mean, largely, you know, like we said, um, it was something initially out of the gate. We wanted to kind of balance that weight um, and weight and functionality component. Um, that's not to say you may or may not see that gun in a chassis. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> that being said, um, you guys recently just came out with some uh, interesting news. Let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah, so we announced this morning the uh, MC7. So we already have the MC5 and MC6. Uh, the MC7 is something we've been working on, and, and you had a couple of sneak peeks over the last few months. But um, this is our, our diving into the uh, larger calibers on the AR platforms. So the MC7 will be available in 308, 260, and 65 Creedmoor. We've been working on design uh, for a little over a year. And just like all our rifles, we don't design the parts we design the entire platform, yeah. and then we test the platform. So we, um, that's the, the prototype that we posted pictures of this morning. Uh, it's actually out in Utah with uh, Buck Doyle right now being shot some more. So if you want a gun shot to pieces and beat up, he is the man that uh, can definitely do that. So Buck is going to uh, 
uh, play with it for a couple more weeks. It'll come back. Uh, we'll make a couple of final adjustments and go into full production. Uh, look to have the MC7 available midsummer. Okay. Um, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna play the clueless gun owner. Okay. Why is this rifle special for someone who's who's just who doesn't quite understand why this platform is such a big announcement for you guys? Yeah, to me, so let's call it generically the AR-10 platform. Mm -hmm. The downside in many cases, now there's some guys out there that make some really nice ones. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not saying we're the only guys out there. And over the last year, especially a lot of manufacturers have been trying to shave weight off that platform. But the main thing for us, that rifle is going to weigh about 7.3 pounds, and that's with a steel barrel. Uh, we'll also be offering it with a free search barrel. But the biggest advantage to us is it's really, it, it almost feels like our MC6, even though there's about a pound, a little over a pound difference. Um, but we didn't want to, and you know us well enough by now, we're all about how lightweight we can make the rifle without uh, sacrificing accuracy. Yeah. And that's where we're at on the MC7. We finally got the weight shaved down to where we wanted it, and we got the accuracy where we wanted it. And so we finally felt comfortable uh, sharing the news this morning and going into production. But that, that's the biggest difference is that it's going to be, and with all of our rifles and other, I, I'll call it custom rifles, there's a difference in shooting a gun that's been tuned, the gas system's tuned, you can run it suppressed, unsuppressed, you're not having to make a lot of adjustments. Uh, the gun is going to shoot soft, uh, and it's going to be crazy accurate. So that's that's going to be the biggest difference is how trim it feels, how light it feels, uh, even in those larger calibers. And I've shot it in all three calibers so far, and especially suppressed, uh, shooting that in a 6.5 Creedmoor suppressed, I, I was just shocked how nice it was to shoot. Hmm. Now, uh, what is the barrel length on the, on the MC7? So it's really whatever you want. Okay. Um, so depending on caliber, so 308, the most common is probably going to be an 18 or 20 inch barrel. Uh, with the Creed more than 260, we've got some guys that are probably going to, they're probably going to, on the short side, be at 18, but the most common is probably going to be 20 to 22 inches on those two calibers. Okay. Now, how did, how did you guys go about getting, because I mean, I have, I have, an AR-15 chambered in 5.56 that weighs almost three or four more pounds <laughs> than the MC-7, according to your stats. What, what, what was the process like in getting the weight down on a rifle like that while still being able to maintain that accuracy? Well, some of it is design and some of it is components. Mm -hmm. So where possible, just like on our MC-6. So while our upper will fit on a standard AR-10 lower, the components, you cannot use them interchangeable interchangeably with other with other parts. So there's proprietary design in our barrel nut, um, our end plates, our castle nut, the actual upper receiver, how it locks together to maintain uh, how it's free floated. That's that's the biggest difference when you look at design. The other thing is components. So if you look at even our dust covers where we do a billet dust cover, carbon fiber uh, retention pins, it's ounces matter. And so even looking at um, our gas blocks, our lighter than most gas blocks, how we port our barrels, anywhere we can take an ounce out of that gun, whether it's in the aesthetics and milling out the receiver or the actual components, the material, that's where you get your total total savings. Awesome. Now, now do we have, do we brought up a picture of the, the actual MC7? Do we have one? Let's, let's throw it up there. there we go. And so now, with, with that being said, um, is there going to be a standard color option, or are people going to be able to, to kind of come up with their own colors that they decide on? Or is are they going to come out in a, a series of colors? Is it going to be a limited run? Uh, so right now we're doing a limited run kind of. We just did really word of mouth over the last week to, to folks that have bought our rifles and have been knew we were working on this. Um, so we're going to do 50 uh, limited edition runs with the matching Mark VI, Leupold Mark VI. In the camo that you see, I assume that picture's up there. I can't see it, but in the in the camo that's in that picture, and I think we have seven left out of the fifty that are unspoken for. Um, but then after that, it'll be just like we do our other rifles. We'll have the standard solid colors, whether that's uh, you know your blacks, tungsten, shadow bronze, FD, so on and so forth. And then we'll have our standard. You know, we have some camos that are unique to us that we've come up with. Um, and then you can always go the full custom route. So if, if somebody has something that they want to put together, optic uh, gun package, we can do something truly custom like we do. Gotcha. Um, now, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, in my video that I did uh, of, of my bolt gun that you guys did for me, uh, I got a lot of heat for my comments on the 308. 
and why I decided to go with the three. I mean, go with the six five creed more over the three hundred eight. So I'm gonna come back and talk about that a little bit. Okay. All right.